How do you like to earn some money by taking 360 photos? One way to get started is by becoming a Google Trusted Photographer. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you why you should become a Google Trusted Photographer, how to become a Google Trusted Photographer. I'm also going to talk about some cameras and equipment that I would recommend, as well as um, some software and techniques. Hey, before we get started, FYI, if we're, you're new to this channel, it's all about 360 cameras and techniques, so go ahead, hit the subscribe button. This video will keep playing. Now let's get started. When you become a Google Trusted Photographer, uh, it lets businesses know that you have some skill in taking 360 photos and your name gets listed in a directory for 360 photographers. Finally, you can market yourself as a Google Trusted Photographer, which helps you distinguish yourself from the competition. So how do you become a Google Trusted Photographer? It's really simple. All you have to do is submit 50 360 photos. Uh, as long as these photos are approved by Google, uh, then you're gonna earn a Google Trusted Photographer badge. For a 360 photo to be approved by Google, um, it has to meet certain minimum standards. First is the resolution. It used to be that the resolution was 14 megapixels, but now they've decreased that to 7.5 megapixels. In other words, 4K, 3840 by 1920. So there are a lot of 360 cameras now that can qualify for that. You also want to make sure that there are no major stitching errors. It also should not apply uh, filters uh, to your photo. Uh, this is not Instagram. So which cameras should you get? First of all, if you're just trying to save money, there are two decent options. One is the LG 360 cam, and the other is the Samsung Gear 360. So because both of these can communicate with the Street View app, um, so it makes it a little bit more convenient. Although these 360 cameras are very cheap, they do have some drawbacks. So the LG 360 cam's image quality is a little bit dated. So um, you're gonna uh, see a lot of noise, particularly uh, chroma noise. So there you'll see a lot of like blotches of color or color speckles. This will still meet the minimum requirements for Google Street View, but uh, down the road when you're when you have paid clients, um, you'll want to get something better than this. Samsung Gear 360 has better image quality than the LG 360 cam with 30 meg megapixel resolution. It's got pretty good detail. Um, now the disadvantage of this is the limited control over it. There's very limited exposure control. Basically you have exposure compensation, that's it. So um, again, this is because of that, this is something you'll probably grow out of. Um, but you know, it will serve your needs as well uh, for Google Street View. And like I said, it also communicates with the Street View app. Now, if you want a 360 camera that can grow with you, there are three that I would suggest. Um, number one is the Ricoh Theta. And there are three versions of this. I'll talk about them. The other two are the Xiaomi Mi Xiaomi Sphere and the Insta 361. All of these have full manual controls. They also have ISO priority and shutter priority. Um, and they, have, uh, they are all capable of long exposures. So these are fantastic for uh, 360 photography. So the advantage of the Xiaomi Mi Xiaomi Sphere and the Insta 361 is that uh, they have higher resolution. They have 24 megapixels, uh, whereas the Theta is uh, about 15 megapixels. Uh, so these two have more detail. On the other hand, the advantage of the, the Theta is that it has wider dynamic range if you use the, the built-in HDR mode. The Ricoh Theta uh, has a price that varies depending on which particular model you get. There's the SC, the S, and the V. Now the SC is the entry level model. It's around $200 right now. Um, and the S is around $250. It used to be $350, it's now gone down to $250 or so. And the V um, is around $400. All three of them take about the same uh, quality of photos. The V, I like it a little bit better. Um, it seems to have a little bit better um, shadow and highlight uh, range. But uh, in terms of resolution, they're about the same. So the Theta V's advantage over the S and SC is that it has high quality video of 4K resolution. And right now in December 2017, this is the only 360 camera that can use a video mode with Google Street View. That means that you can use the video and it is of such high quality that you can that uh, Google will accept frame grabs from the uh, 360 video and import them into Google Street View directly. So 
um, it makes it convenient when you want to just drive around um, shooting a video and then uh, allow Street View to extract photos automatically. So the Xiaomi Mi Xiaomi Sphere is around $200 to $250. Uh, the Insta 361 is around $270 to $300. The Xiaomi Mi Xiaomi Sphere and the Insta 361 both have excellent resolution, 24 megapixels, and they both have uh, great image quality, um, dynamic range, and so on and so forth. Um, I would say the main difference between them is that the Insta 361 is a little bit easier to use. Um, its app is a little more polished and comes with like a few more bells and whistles but otherwise you know these two are both great choices if you want to get the best prices for these cameras check out the links in the description below besides the 360 camera the other essential piece of equipment is a stand so you'll need two kinds of stands the first one is a compact uh, stand and the Benro MK10 is a selfie stick tripod this is the stand that I use for 90% of my photos um, and when it's collapsed you can see it's very compact it actually fits in my front pocket the second advantage of the Benro MK10 is that it's a selfie stick tripod so this handle can become a stand for a tripod and the shaft can extend it's got decent length as well the third advantage of the Benro MK10 is that the ball head is removable and when you uh, attach the 360 camera directly to the shaft, uh, the Benro MK10 becomes invisible. Um, you can check out my video to see how this works. Uh, the most important advantage of the Benro MK10 is that it's very inconspicuous. I just, you know, put it on a table like that and I take a photo. Um, and you know, no one cares. People just ignore it. This lets you take more photos um, and lets you qualify for Google Street View uh, Trusted Photographer much more quickly. Now, although the Benro MK10 is really useful and convenient, there are some situations where it's uh, simply too short or not stable enough when you're outside. So for that, you'll need a taller and more stable stand. And here are the ones that I would suggest. First of all, if you already have a tripod, uh, especially one with a removable head, then you can just get a uh, monopod uh, and then simply attach it to your tripod. And this will work uh, pretty well. Um, although it won't be very compact, it will be fairly stable and will achieve the necessary height. Now, if you're looking for a stand that's more compact, the one that I would recommend is actually a light stand called the Manfrotto uh, Nano. Uh, so this is a normal light stand and as you can see um, the nano is much shorter much more compact but the nano can actually extend to around seven feet in height so it packs a lot of height for a very compact size the other thing i like about the manfrotto nano is that the legs are pretty slim when you're looking at it from a bird's eye view so from the 360 camera's perspective the nano's legs are very unobtrusive so there are two kinds of nanos right now uh, one is the original manfrotto nano the the second is the newer manfrotto nanopole uh, this is the nanopole the one with the red legs um, and the main difference is that the nanopole's uh, shaft is detachable so that it can become um, kind of like a boom and so if you want to use it as a handheld boom you can do that adding a 360 photo to street view is really easy you don't even need gps coordinates simply launch the street view app on the bottom right corner tap on the camera icon then tap on import 360 photos then select the 360 photo that you want to add make sure that it's already stitched then look for the 360 photo and hold your finger on it uh, then tap on the upper right corner uh, where there are three dots and click on pick a maps listing then type the name of the place so now it says maps listing sh saved now another thing you can do is uh, blur faces so to do that tap on the photo and when you see a square that means that the uh, face is going to be blurred and then you can uh, choose in the uh, upper right corner whether to apply the bur blurring or remove the blurring so in this case I want to remove the blurring and then uh, the next thing you, you can do is uh, tap on publish to Google Maps 
Now let's talk about how to take street view photos efficiently. So first, we should minimize stitching errors. And the easiest way to do that is to get a decent 360 camera. Um, if you get a decent 360 camera, it will stitch it correctly for you. Uh, so you're not going to have major stitching errors. Secondly, you should use the right technique. Um, now, if you're new to 360 photography, check out the links in the description. There's a link there to an article uh, where, that I will post on my website, 360rooms.com. It talks about some suggestions for taking uh, 360 photos. Third, it seems that uh, 360 photos get approved more quickly if they earn a lot of views quickly. So here are some tips for getting a lot of views for your 360 photos. Uh, first of all, you need to pick the right location uh, to take photos. Uh, if you pick one at you know some obscure location that no one has heard of, then it's not going to earn a lot of views no matter what. Um, you'll have to, uh, on the other hand, if you pick just like a fast food restaurant or you know a Starbucks or something like that that where a lot of people go to, um, it's going to have a higher chance of earning views. Um, another way to earn higher views is by looking for new places, uh, th especially like trendy places that have just opened up a branch uh, near you. If you're one of the first people to take a 360 photo there, your, your photo is going to earn a lot of views very quickly. The Street View app itself has a feature that can help you identify places that need 360 photos. If you look on the right side of it, um, there's a feature there called um, Contribute. It will show you the places around you that need 360 photos. It will even tell you how many people look at that Street View page for that business every day to give you an idea of how popular it is. Another thing you can do to improve the uh, popularity of your photo is to edit it uh, so that it looks its best. And one uh, simple editor that you can use is Google Photos. What's good about Google Photos besides the fact that it's free is that it can recognize 360 photos. Uh, so uh, it will allow you to view the photo in 360 and more importantly, edit them without destroying the 360 metadata. In other words, even after editing a photo with Google Photos, uh, the, any 360 photo viewer will still recognize the photo as 360, including Street View. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to network with other 360 photographers who are also uh, building a 360 photography business, check out this Facebook group called 3D and 360 uh, Virtual Tour Photographers Network. Uh, the address is listed there in the description. Um, and there's a link there as well. You can also check out my other videos, including the best 360 cameras for real estate. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.